انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد one of the ways through which we gain our focus in our salah one of the ways through which we can get concentration that we all know which is called khushu in the prayer is by knowing the words that we are uttering is by knowing the words that we are saying and therefore it should be our priority or our uh, responsibility to learn the meanings of what we are saying just as in the last khutbah it was mentioned that we should seek knowledge we should try to understand this religion what does it mean what does it say so inshallah ta'ala in this brief time that we have together i would like to elaborate upon the meanings of a particular chapter in the quran a particular surah that most of us know by heart this surah occurs in the 95th chapter of the quran known as surah at-tin surah at-tin is composed of eight short verses this surah was revealed to our beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the early part of his da'wah in Mecca it was revealed as part of the first 20 or so revelations that came down to our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so inshallah ta'ala we shall elaborate upon some of the meanings and try to benefit from what allah is telling us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa at-tin wa az-zaytun wa tur sinin wa hadha al-balad al-amin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off the surah with four qasams. Qasam is called an oath in the English language. An oath that is taken in order to bring our attention to something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath in order to bring our attention to something that is coming up. That is one reason why Allah is swearing. The second reason for which Allah swears by something or takes an oath by something is in order for us to ponder over what is being said. It's in order for Allah to emphasize what he is saying. And in our own lives we see this whenever we try to make a point to someone, whenever we try to cause the other person to accept what we are saying, we swear by Allah, don't we? And that is why we as creation we can swear only by Allah and his attributes because only Allah deserves that kind of respect that you swear by him and that is why we're not allowed as creation as human beings to swear by other than him but Allah being the creator can swear by anything can take an oath by anything that he wishes and also another thing is that once Allah swears by something it raises the status of that thing it raises the status of that object just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by many many things in the Quran from the surah shams surah 91 verses 1 and 2 and they go on Allah swears by the sun and the moon the things that Allah swears by those things are characterized by majesty and beauty so let us first talk about what are these four things that Allah takes an oath by and then we will come to the
culmination of those qasams where Allah wants us to pay attention to. So Allah begins by saying, وَالدِّينِ zaitun." When we look at the books of Tafsir, we learn that there are certain things that Allah is referring to. And the translation of this would be by the fig and the olive. But the scholars mention that the immediate reference is not to these fruits or not to these plants. Rather, the reference first and foremost is primarily to the land that these fruits or these plants belong to. And that land is the land of Jerusalem. The land of Jerusalem. Another interpretation of this first verse is that Atin refers to the land where Nuh السلام, his ship had landed. This is what Atin refers to. So we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing our attention to the land of Jerusalem and also the land where Nuh السلام's boat or the ship or the ark landed. Now why Jerusalem? Why this city or this land of Jerusalem? This is because, your brothers and sisters, Jerusalem is the place where majority of Allah's messengers were sent to. It is the blessed and the holy land where Allah sent the majority of His messengers and prophets to for the guidance of mankind. Then we move on to verse number two. Allah swears by the Mount of Sinai. And there's only one meaning to this, one interpretation. Allah is indeed referring to the Mount of Sinai. Why the Mount of Sinai? This was the place where Allah communicated with Musa alayhi salam. Allah communicated with Musa alayhi salam and gave him the revelation. So we learn from these oaths that Allah is taking that there is a reference to the land and there is a reference to these prophets. And then verse number three tells us Allah takes the, brings the fourth object by which He takes an oath. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ amin, And by the city that has aman, that has security, that has no violence that happens in it. And the reference to this is the city of Mecca, the city of the Prophet So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about three lands now. Jerusalem, the land where Nuh his ark landed, and the city of Mecca. Also, Allah is referring to the five prophets. The five prophets known as the Ulul Azm, the prophets of firm resolute, the prophets of firm determination. Who were they? Nuh alayhis salam, Ibrahim alayhis salam, and then Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Musa is referred to by the Mount Sinai. Jerusalem brings forth the Prophet, or it refers to Prophet Musa and Isa. Then how do Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Ibrahim alayhi salam fit into the equation from the city of Mecca? This was the city where Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba. This is where he built the Kaaba for the worship of mankind. And then the Prophet was also sent, also came from this land. Now Allah has talked about these four things, but what is it building up to? It is building up to the fourth verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now has sworn by these four things and now Allah is causing us to pay attention to what's coming up. And this verse even begins by the word لَقَدْ لَقَدْ is a further emphasis. What is Allah telling us? That verily have no doubt, O mankind, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ That we have created you from the best of shapes. We have created you in the best form. We have created you in the best stature. And we also learn from this the Islamic concept that mankind is the creation that has been given preference over all other creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the second surah of the Quran, surah Baqarah, verse 29, Allah says, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا That for you, O mankind, for you has been subjugated whatever is on earth. Use it for yourself to benefit, for your, to benefit yourself. 
And we learn from this that having been given this blessing comes also with it responsibility. Not exploitation, but rather responsibility. You have been preferred over everyone else, so therefore you have a task to do. And what is this task? What is this task that Allah wants us to do? And that is none other than Tawheed. To establish the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the scholars mention in explanation of this verse that Allah is telling us that Allah has perfected our creation in every way compared to all of the rest of mankind. So in terms of physical attributes and characteristics, Allah has made us the best. In terms of spiritual, in terms of uh, intellectual power, Allah has made us the best. We are the only creation that innovates, that comes forth, that builds a civilization. We leave the villages and the jungles or whatever the forests, whatever there are for the cities, we come and build a civilization. The rest of creation doesn't do this. We are the one who have been blessed with a complex communication, complex language. The rest of creation has not. So with these blessings, then it makes perfect sense that why don't we then balance it up with the spirituality that Allah wants. Because then, that is mentioned in the next verse. The next verse suddenly says something which is shocking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by four things. He is building up the temple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then emphasizes to us that we have been blessed, been made the most noble of creation. And then he gives us this dignity. And suddenly the next verse after that Allah says, Allah says, and then mankind returns to the lowest of the low. Mankind returns to the lowest of the low. How is this possible? Something so shocking. Allah says, you are at the peak. You are at the pinnacle of creation. And suddenly now, you are at the lowest of the low. This is because Allah is telling me and you that out of our own arrogance, out of our own disobedience, out of our own insolence, what happens is we become from the lowest of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have perfected you over all of creation, giving you this sound intelligence, giving you the power of reasoning that none other have. And then out of your arrogance and turning your back to Allah's message, turning your back to Allah's message that He has given, this Quran, this message, this Tawheed, this oneness of Allah, then indeed you have become like animals, in fact worse than them. As Allah tells us in Surah 25, Surah Furqan, verse 44, in whom illa kal an'am, bal hum adallu sabila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who reject guidance, they are like cattle, nay, they are worse than cattle. They're worse than these animals because you have this intelligence and if you don't make use of it to ponder over the creation around you, you don't make use of it to think about how Allah brought this into place. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused me to be here for a purpose, for a reason. Then Allah says that you don't even deserve to have that intelligence in the first place. That you are inhum illa bil an'am, that you are nothing less than a cattle. Badilhum aqal. But indeed, you are even worse than cattle. But then, the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in, surah, in verse number 6 of the same surah theme. Allah says, After thumma radadnahu asfana safirin, illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then qualifies. Allah then says, that those who turn their back on Allah, they become the lowest of the low, except, except, Except the ones who believe in Allah, who have this sound Iman and follow it up with actions. So Allah told us in the previous verse that there are two groups. One group is at the pinnacle, one group is at the height. This is this group that is being described now. This group that has firm belief in Allah and follows up their belief with righteous actions. This is this group. Allah does not describe the group that fell off. Allah does not describe the group that fell off and became the lowest of the low because there's no need to describe them. 
Rather, Allah spends time to bring our attention to the fact that you've been given all of these blessings. So therefore, have iman in Allah. Therefore, follow up your righteous, your iman with righteous actions. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me and you. You see, there is a misconception amongst many Muslims that you have on one side of the spectrum a group of Muslims who say that I have belief in Allah, that's enough. That's enough. This belief in Allah and inshallah it will take me so I can just chill out, have fun, live it up, live my life and I will see whatever happens in the hereafter. And the polar opposite of that is the other Muslim who says that I will sacrifice anything in this dunya, I will sacrifice all the pleasures, even though I can afford it, I shall sacrifice these pleasures, I shall sacrifice all of these facilities that Allah has given to me in order to get reward in the hereafter. But what does this verse tell us? Verse number 6, the end of it, it says, Allah says that those who have sound faith and follow it up with righteous and good deeds, for them is an ajr, for them is a reward that is that is uninterrupted. A reward that does not come to an end. A reward that continues forever and ever. So this verse tells us that should you and I choose to become righteous, then our reward begins right now. Our reward starts off right now, right here. Not in the Akhirah, it begins right from this dunya. And it continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that it continues without any interruption. It continues continuously and continually. Even after death, in the grave it shall continue to benefit the person. Even after death, in the grave it will, in the hereafter, in Jannah it will, and it shall never cease. This is what Allah is telling me and you. That this is a reward that does not come to an end. Don't think that your reward will suddenly come to an end. Rather, think that this is the life that you want to choose. You want to live a life where Allah is the priority. You and I should strive for the life where Allah comes first and foremost. We do not look for the easy way out. Rather, we have taqwa in Allah. We have hope in Allah. That Allah, through my good deeds, will grant me rewards. And yes, if there are certain things that are not allowed, so what? I will leave them off for the pleasure of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and says, فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينِ Allah then says, and the Arabic is very profound, Allah says, So how is it possible for you to belie, to deny a deen? There are two meanings of the word ad deen Just like in Surah Fatiha we recite Maliki Yawmi deen Owner of the Day of Judgment Similarly here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that how could you possibly deny the Day of Judgment? When you see all of these blessings given to you When you see that you have been blessed above all of creation When all of this thing has been given to you How is it possible for you to deny the Day of Resurrection. Another meaning of deen is the religion of Islam. The religion itself. That a person turns his back away from the religion. And then Allah finishes the surah by saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ And so, is not Allah, Allah asks this question, is not Allah then the most wise of judges? Is not Allah then the most just of judges? You see, in this dunya, whenever a person is wrong, there is a justice system in place. But how often do we see that justice has really been done? How many times you would see a righteous person who has been wrong, who is undergoing torture, who is undergoing problems, yet you see a criminal who is living a flourishing life? So what type of justice is this? So Allah says, on that day shall be the true justice. And it is a wake up call for me and you, that we as Muslims should not think that once we've done certain good deeds, I can slide by, by lying or by stealing or by deal, dealing in fraudulent activities. I will be able to, all my other good deeds will be taken care of. They're gonna take care of these evils that I've committed. No, not at all. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the most just of judges. To deny recompenses, to deny the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Inshallah, we shall discuss in the second khutbah a summary of some of the lessons in this surah. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Karim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil-ayat wa dhikr al-Kaheem innahu ta'ala jawad al-Karim wa malikum barum wa al-Fu'ah. Inna alhamdulillahi na'amaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'ufiru wa na'udhu billahi min shuhumi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina Man yahdihi allahu ta'ala fahu wa al-muhtad wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu wa liya mushida Wa ashadu an la ilaha ita allah wa ahtahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim wa ala hamidu al-majid اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد. There are three fundamental lessons to learn from Surah Al-Din that we've been discussing. The first lesson is just as Allah سبحانه وتعالى has perfected our physical form. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected our physical beauty, our intellectual minds, has given us an intellect, similarly, we should try, not just a little bit, but we should try our utmost to give in return, to balance it out with, by perfecting our spiritual aspect. Just as Allah made our physical being the best, we should balance it with our spiritual being. We should balance it with spirituality. You see, our bodies contain, of the, contain the soul. The soul that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just as this, the nutrients from this world benefit the body, the physical body, the only thing that will benefit the soul are the nutrients from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the worship of Allah. This is the dhikr of Allah. This is what gives life to the heart. This is what brings about a consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first lesson is just as Allah perfected us لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Just as Allah perfected our physical faculties, we should perfect our spiritual faculties. The second lesson that we learn from this surah is when we turn our backs, when we turn our backs to the remembrance of Allah, when we turn our backs to spending in the path of Allah, to worshipping Allah, when we turn our backs to this, then we become from the أَسْفَلَ سَافِرِينَ there's no intermediary, no. It's either you are with the role models that Allah has mentioned. These are the ones who are the best. These are the ones who have sound faith and follow it up with good righteous deeds. If you're not from them, then you become from the lowest of the low. Then I become from the lowest of the low. So this is the second lesson that when we turn our backs to the message and to the obedience of Allah, we become from the lowest of the low. And then the third lesson is that Iman, a person's belief, must be coupled with actions. You can never have one to the exclusion of the other. It doesn't work that way. It is against the teachings of the Quran. And when we do this, we couple our belief with our actions, then indeed Allah says, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ This intellect should cause us to worship Allah even better. Look at what Allah tells us of those who have this intellect but they don't use it. Allah tells us in Surah Mulk, Surah 67, verses 11 and 12. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verses 10, 11 and 12, Allah tells us that those who shall be thrown into the fire of hell, when they are thrown therein, they shall be asked by the angels, the gatekeepers of the fire of hell, did not a nadir come to you? Did not someone who was warning you, warning you with the message of Allah, telling you to spend in the path of Allah, follow the five pillars of Islam, wasn't there somebody who was coming to you with this? They will say, indeed there was. But we told him, we belied him. We said, Allah has not sent you. We belied him. And then they say, if only we had listened and used our intelligence. If only we had listened and used our aql, aql, intelligence, we would not have been from the companions of the blazing fire. Allah then says, so they will accept their sin, they will accept their, their mistakes they did, but away with them. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the exit, like a scholar said, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the fire, He would mention the fire exit. 
Allah then says in the next verse, verse number 12, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who have faith, except those who have يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ They fear Allah in the unseen. فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them is a great and for them is a great reward. Something that's also mentioned in the surah that we were discussing. A reward that shall never ever end. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me and you from those who understand this surah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me and you from those who have sound faith and who follow it up with sound actions. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, Ya Rahmukum Allah, Inna Allah Ta'ala, Ya Rahmukum Bil Alim, Wal Ihsan, Wal Ita'i, Ida Al Qurba, Wa Yanha, Wal Fahshai, Wal Munkar, Wal Baghi, Ya Idukum Bil Alim, Kum Tadak Karun, Uzku Allah, Dikran Kathir, Wa Sabbihu, Wa Bukratan, Wa Asila, Wa Ladikru Allah Ta'ala, Ahla, Wa Chadu, Wa Tabu, Wa Akham, Wa Adbar, Aqim Al Salah.